Hey, I uh, I wanted to share this presentation with you, um, and and I want to talk over it because partly I want to make a defense for why I think it's important that we learn about perspective. I, I think there's a lot of people that you know kind of are, that interested in it, or they they think it's too technical, and you know, for me when I was in high school. Um, I really thought I understood how to create a sense of depth, you know, like I kind of had uh, these little boxes that I would draw and they weren't really too perspective. They, they were, they looked three dimensional though. And like to a point, like I could really uh, create a sense of depth without understanding um, the laws of perspective. Right. But as I started to really understand it, it really opened up my eyes and helped me understand just a whole different way of processing my art. And I'm not saying that I use perspective all the time. Um, I don't, I don't set up like, you know, like this here. Now um, this picture of this rather unpleasant iguana. Um, well, this one I did, you know, like I had vanishing points here and those vanishing points um, extended beyond the edges on both sides. And I, you know, purposely did this in two point perspective. And, you know, obviously, you know, I'm using rulers and pencils and making erases and like, you know, really inking everything and making it, um, you know, very defined and refined. And, you know, and it follows all those perspective laws um, really well. Now, normally, though, yeah, I don't draw like that. Like, I don't, I don't use a horizon line necessarily or vanishing points. I don't, I don't worry about everything being perfect, you know, perfectly in perspective, but I do take lessons from what I learned through doing perspective. Like I do apply those understandings. So like there's a logic in the way that you show depth, right? In the way lines should go. And after you've been a student of perspective, you tend to bring that into other types of artwork that you do. Um, by the way, this next one here is the color version of that. I uh, scanned it in and then I digitally colorized it. And he, he, he looks like he's not angry. I, uh, But he might be unpleasant, so I called him an unpleasant iguana because obviously he's destroyed a, a good portion of the town. This is a example of one point perspective. Um, I was doing these little drawings I'd actually like put them in my car. Um, I'd have like a little pad of paper and, you know, whenever I um, was in a parking lot or waiting for something or, you know, like just had little points where I didn't have anything to do. I would, um, I'd pull this out and I'd either bring it with me or draw it right there. And, um, you know, I made this series like kind of strange creatures that would inhabit kind of everyday environments, uh, like these big ginormous centipedes that are inside this bathroom, which I imagine if you walked in here, um, you wouldn't be too happy to, to meet them. Um, I like how this one kind of wraps around the ceiling here. And then you got this one tucked away behind the sink. So centipedes in a bathroom. I did a few of these and these are all one eye or one um, point perspective. This one's with the bird's eye perspective. And I think the vanishing point is like somewhere around here between the couple. And I, I called this one bed bugs. And, you know, I kind of thought it was funny how um, this person looks like, uh, I don't know, they're kind of tossing and turning and maybe, um, don't have quite enough of the blanket to cover their little feet. Um, and then of course, you know, all the lines are extending down below the room, just a different way of doing one point perspective to create more of a bird's eye view. This is called snails in the kitchen. Uh, I should have uploaded a bit higher quality of a version of this it's a little pixelated but I just thought this was kind of funny it almost has sort of like a like a Simpsons color palette and um I, I think I was thinking of uh Spongebob uh the Gary you know Spongebob's pet um pet snail uh when I made this and just how kind of funny snails look 
And um, I think it's kind of fun to have one of them just hanging out here on the ceiling. This, by the way, um, also put something in the ceiling because I felt like it looked really empty there. So I'm like, oh, I've got to put something up there. Well, let's put a snail, you know. And I thought it was kind of an interesting perspective, too. Again, this is one point, um, much the same as these other two. Um, I like how you're kind of looking over the, the um, silverware drawer in the stove. And then you got this one guy that's just kind of walking out to the other room. I've always been fascinated by spaces that open up to somewhere else that you can't see. I just think it's really interesting. And I did that a lot in this next drawing. Um, I called this Occupied by Octopi. And it's a triptych. Now I have them layered over the center one right now. But I just wanted you to be able to see it somewhat together. Um, the middle panel is this one and this is actually where the vanishing point is so again this is one point perspective the eye of the octopus is the um the vanishing point and it was kind of funny that he's like reaching for a pie and the way he's kind of wrapped around the table and you know obviously not making a whole lot of use of that seat um then you have these other ones that are sort of like hanging out playing around and some kind of invader there's a few uh octopi outside that look like they want to get at that that pie um the octopi going for the pie um now i made this one as a triptych because i kind of had this idea of um having one vanishing point that leads into other rooms uh so you know if you can kind of imagine right now what this space looks like that's where we're headed next and all the things in this room actually go back to the vanishing point on the other side. Let me go back to this first frame just so you can kind of better visualize it. Like you're looking into this room and then this little opening is that room. So, you know, with this one, uh, something that happens when you get further and further away from that vanishing point to the edges is you start to get a lot of distortion. And to correct for that, there's actually a lot of inaccuracies in here. Um, for instance, the tiles, if you notice, are starting to get really skewed and stretched as you get out to this outer edge. Now, if it was one point perspective and we had a vanishing point more in a central location, that wouldn't happen so much. You're still going to get some distortion, but it's really intensified here. And really, this doorway and this refrigerator are not truly in perspective. I mean, they follow the vanishing point, but they'd be much more distorted. So I kind of adjusted it. Um, to make it look better for the composition. And then uh, in this one, you've got, they're, they're really destroying this place. This guy's in the sink, hanging out with these bubbles. Something broke through the window. That was that other octopus that was breaking through in the last panel. He's holding some soap, though. I guess he's cleaning, at least. He's got a little cup of water next to him. And then uh, you got this other octopus that looks like he's trying to get out of the refrigerator. I don't know if he put him in there, um, but he's trying to get out. He's hiding behind a vacuum, which obviously he's not using to clean this room. And then you got these two down here just kind of chilling in this big crevice. And then the last panel, the third panel, this is on the right side. And um, this guy looks like he's like getting ready to go steal this lamp. He's uh, give it up on that book there. And then you've got this one hanging on a ceiling fan. Just was kind of a playful uh, composition of these octopi. And um, I'm really trying to use the octopi to lead the eye around the room. Like, you know, this one, the tentacles are kind of pointing up and then this kind of leads you back around. And so there's some like visual things that lead the eye and create some visual interest uh, here's a, another two point perspective. Uh, this is called late night snack. I actually did this as a part of Inktober. I've, I've participated in that for, um, for some years now. And, uh, this is a bird's eye view. It's in all truth. 
I didn't use perspective lines here. Um, I, I kind of guesstimated, but, you know, I've done enough perspective where I know how it looks. I don't think this would hold up to a ruler. Like, I wouldn't want you to actually test it out. But generally speaking, that's two-point perspective, and it's like a bird's eye view. But I just like the idea of these aliens coming into a town and, you know, instead of... Um, you know, I don't know, conquering the earth or, you know, taking people and enslaving them into some kind of alien thing or whatever aliens do. Um, they just stop by to get some snacks. You know, they're kind of looking for some of that fast food and uh, they're going to be on their way. So uh, they're uh, pulling up all the uh, burgers and shakes and French fries into their uh, alien UFO ship. And then here's another one. I've got these kind of playful destruction uh, pictures. Um, this is another Inktober drawing. And again, this is not really perspective, but it does follow some perspective laws. Um, we've got a couple things happening. We've got like another alien attack. I did these on separate years, so I guess I have this on the mind. And then these are these robotic uh, creatures, or just robots that are, you know, uh, having a fun time in this city. These are kind of getting a little disturbing. Uh, this is, uh, I, I, I thought this was kind of interesting. This is another Inktober. And here again, it's a bird's eye view. Um, and you have to assume that this creature is above you right now. So you're up there too. I don't know if you're captured by them. Like it's kind of interesting to think of where you're at as a viewer, but um, the shadow is cast over the town. And I had a fun time with like kind of inverting some of the tones in order to like define things. So like you don't see um, a lot of the details um, that are in the other area um, except for in the shadow, you know, so now like instead of black lines, it's white lines and it kind of, um, inverts, uh, to show it. And I had a fun time kind of like trying to show what that cast shadow might look like. I mean, I think I could do a better job with it now, but I had some fun with it at the time. <clears throat> Did this one a while back. This is sort of like three point perspective. Uh, I just say I kind of threw it off a little bit with the Atari. I have all these like different games and game controllers and systems. Um, you probably wouldn't be familiar with a lot of these, but this is a Sega Genesis. This is an Atari. This is a Nintendo. This is a GameCube. This is a Super Nintendo. This is my very favorite system, um, which was way before you were born, is a ColecoVision. And that's a uh, that's really a fun system. And I have the back in the 80s, they used to have these um, shelves that would hold games. They'd always have like fake wood panels on them. And I, I just kind of like am a bit nostalgic for that. Same with like the Atari. It had like a fake wood look to it, which is kind of weird, you know, in hindsight. Like, why would you build this electric device out of wood? But, you know, that's what they did. <clears throat> Not build it out of wood, but we'll put a veneer on it. And then the pathways or the roads are all these like tangled cords, which I thought was kind of a fun thing. And, you know, just kind of showing like these um, game cartridges and controllers floating around in these pathways. This is another one point perspective bird's eye. I do a lot of those, apparently. Um, this is one I did for um, an art show. And uh, I can't remember what the theme was now, but I called this one Release the Kraken. And, uh, you yeah, know, I'm still, like, not happy with this. Like, I, um, <clears throat> I've kind of had this, like, vision of having this, like, beast, like, breaking through something and, you know, sort of revealing himself and just, you know, oh, so massive. And, um, yeah, I think I kind of hit it to a point, but I might redraw this one at some point a little better. I like how those tentacles kind of wrap around some of these buildings, and I thought I did a pretty good job of using really the center of his mouth as the vanishing point. Um, actually, no, it's a little bit above that, but it's close to there. And then kind of having these broken um, pieces of debris and 
concrete and kind of showing um, perspective with those lines as well. More in an organic way, though. And that is something to think about when you're making your own drawings. Like, how are you incorporating this organic structure that doesn't really follow perspective in the same way as, say, a building does? And how do you make that look accurate? And there are ways of, like creating boxes for yourself and different shapes and perspective to kind of help you identify that. But, you know, kind of in the end, it's, it's all about the way you intermingle it and making sure that you're aware of the logic behind what you're drawing so that it makes sense for where you put things like, say, tentacles. This is uh, the Cosmic Phantom. This isn't really necessarily a, a perspective drawing, but I do think there's a lot of dimension in it. And I definitely drew this with the knowledge of perspective in mind. Um, you know, like I was saying before, you know, there's a lot of people that will hate perspective or they um, they really dislike it and they, they, you know, they think it's too technical. But, you know, for me, it really helped me understand how to show depth in a way that I really just couldn't do before, you know. Know, like I um I had my own way of showing depth and at the time I thought it was great but you know, I don't know learning perspective was really eye-opening for me here's one um not like your traditional like a lot of these other ones are like all line art now we're getting into some more shading um another inktober piece and um this is where in the future, the world is finally taken over by roaches, and they have this little parade that's celebrating the left-behind elements of the humans. Like, they've got this can of raid here, and uh, they've got these masks. One's wearing a dinosaur head, and one's wearing like, a human head, and he's blowing a horn, and... Um, you've got like the Statue of Liberty, but it's a, it's a bug. It's a, it's a, or whatever, a roach is a bug or some kind of insect. And then they have the New Year's Eve ball here. So it's, it's New Year's and, uh, they're celebrating. This is Red Robot. Uh, really just had fun with this. I, I actually used a dip pen, like, uh, uh, one where you, you know, you dip it into like a little vat of ink and, you know, you, I was drawing on black paper with it. it was, I was using red ink. And uh, honestly, the original picture, because I was doing red on black, which you know, doesn't really pop a whole lot, um, it's it's very hard to see the lines in the original picture. I, I had to use Photoshop to really like pop it out a little bit more because otherwise it looked really flat. Revenge of the Plants, another one that's like, Something I was able to draw because of my understanding of perspective, but doesn't kind of loosely follows perspective laws. This one's pretty much perspective. I mean, you know, this is one point for sure. So hard not to hard, to, hard not to see those lines. I uh, use a lot of repetition here in the um, in the background with all the you know, planes and missiles and everything. And then just kind of have this like super tank. I, I called it the Mars tank um, in Aries because of the Greek god of war. I thought that would be kind of an interesting connection. And then um, I do like how in this one, I have the tank sort of breaking out um, from the edges of the, the frame here. And this cannon really almost does feel like it's coming at you um, when you look at it. And then this last picture here, um, I'm actually going to be submitting this to a show here in a few weeks, and it's a Godzilla-inspired piece. And then here again, you know, like maybe roughly three-point perspective, um, you know, there's a very formula-driven way of doing perspective, and I think it's important that you learn that. I think it's important that you spend some time thinking through the process and thinking through um, the way it works and um, working out some of those different perspective problems that you might face when you're when you're drawing and you know figuring out oh how do I draw a window how do I draw a chair in perspective you know how do I figure out how to connect these windows or when I go from these windows to the windows on the side like how do I line those up and you know what vanishing point does this go to um you know all those kind of questions that you have to ask yourself when you're drawing in perspective and I, I think going through that process of thinking through how to show depth 
um, really has an impact on how you think and draw later. So just want to give um, some samples of different ways of working with perspective, different types of perspective, different point of views, and then just a little defense for why I think perspective's important. Thank you and uh, have a great day.